All right, here we go. Round three. Round three. Third time's a charm. Third time's a charm. All right. There we go. <laughs> and... Hey guys, this is your girl Tam Cam, and welcome to another edition of the Tam Cam Show. Uh uh. Yeah, so glad to have you. And if you're listening, thank you once again for being a faithful listener. And if you're watching, guys, we have an amazing guest. As you can see, this beautiful lady right here. One of my really good friends, another one of my good friends from when I first moved here. We were, we were in a book club together, right? Yes. 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 Back I in, had just moved here. Really? At the same time. I moved here in 2006. Oh, I moved here in 2000. Actually, 99. I moved here. Yeah. Yeah. We got Karen Scott, guys. Karen Scott is a life coach. Yes. Life and, coach. And a chef mommy. And a chef mommy, yes. <laughs> Her food is amazing, guys. I actually had a photo shoot with Karen just the other day, and she brought some of her amazing chili. Does it have a special name, your chili, that you It brought? doesn't have a special name, but I'm working that out. Okay, yeah. yeah. But any, anyway, guys, you got to check her out, and we're going to go ahead and get to that in just a moment, but we're going to go ahead and, and give you a little background of me and Karen. Now, Karen actually used to do my hair. <laughs> Yeah, you used to do my hair. We yes. met through the book club. Um, Eclectic Beauty was the name of your business. Yes. And you've gotten away from doing hair, yes. right? Yes. And we're going to get into that as well. So right now she has two passions. And I always say, if you didn't come out of the pandemic, are we still in the pandemic? We are still technically, but on the outskirts of it because we got to get back to work. We got to get the economy moving. So. Exactly. So I'm confused sometimes. <laughs> I know a lot of people are not wearing masks, but I mean, but anyway, um, I learned how to put together this podcast and, you know, I'm really proud of myself and I'm especially proud of Miss Karen here because she actually came up with two businesses. Um, mm -hmm. And I always say, guys, we all have un tap potential yes you just have to experiment and look further into you know what you are interested in you don't have to define yourself by one profession or or right. one thing in life so um let's go ahead and tell everyone who you are and get you some business girl some All more right. business awesome yeah. awesome well my name is karen scott and i am mommy's lunch connection i'm the mommy chef for mommy's lunch connection but i'm also a heart-centered life coach with revealing hidden virtue coaching and um i'm it, it's something that's been in the works for a long time i just caught up with it okay <laughs> <laughs> so I, you were doing it behind the scenes yeah because like as a hairstylist right you know people tell you things that they you're, wouldn't tell anybody right you're you know? like a therapist so we're like a th exactly just unpaid exactly <laughs> <laughs> it's the bonus part of your appointment right <laughs> and so I thought I wanted to become a life coach and I took a heart-centered program and um just didn't move forward with it because I got afraid right you know? Yeah. What, what, what pushed you forward? Life yeah. happened uh -huh. to me in January of mm -hmm. 2021. Ooh. And it, it forced me to move forward as opposed to staying stuck. Okay. You know, and reinvention is something that I've always been promoting and sharing. And now I'm living it. Absolutely. Yeah. So we're going to go ahead and dive right in 13 mm -hmm. months ago you actually um began this journey yes um let's go ahead and start from the top okay well in october of 2020 mm -hmm. i heard this little voice inside say to step away from the salon and m pursue my coaching okay so i started i made like feeble attempts but i really wasn't wholeheartedly going for it because i couldn't figure out how i was going to replace an income that i had developed for 38 years mm. You know, Thir wait, 38 years. I've been doing hair for 38 years and I was trying to. And so in my mind, I'm thinking, OK, I'm just going to get to 40 and then I'll retire right. and then I'll go full force with right. life coaching and doing all the other stuff that I want to do. OK, 
So I started a class called Rise of the Phoenix, okay. and it helps people to walk through reinventing themselves from the inside out. I started that class in November mm-hmm. of 2020, mm-hmm. and it um, it was eight weeks. I had eight people in the class. We ended on January 21st. Okay. January 20. Now during this time, mm-hmm. my brother was in the hospital with COVID. Oh. And both my brothers went into the hospital at the same time. They mm-hmm. just went into two different hospitals. Oh. One brother came out, the other brother didn't. I got a call on the 24th of January saying that he may not make it through the night, so I needed to get there. So I hopped on a plane, and I typically don't care for American Airlines, but they were able to get me on a flight like literally within a couple of hours, and I was there. Um, I went to the hospital to see him on the 25th, mm-hmm. The 26th, he passed away. Mm. The 27th, I had a stroke and ended up in the hospital. Now, this I didn't know until recently. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And that is where my life changed because now I can't go back into the salon. So all the things that I had heard in October, Mm -hmm. God knew were ahead of me. Right. I didn't know to listen. So I had to, everything that I had taught everybody in the class mm-hmm. about reinventing themselves, right. you know, going and looking at what it is that you loved as a kid, because a lot of times we're taught out of our gifts mm. because people think that we need to go to school and we need to learn this and we need to do this. Every excuse and, in the world. Yeah. But we are sent here with our gift. Whatever it is that we are to use to make a living, to be a blessing, to it, it, we're, we're given that thing. So like if you have a kid that is nosy, right. Or they're bossy or manipulative, right. If they learn how to use that, Mm -hmm. it can become negotiation skills. Yeah. Not manipulation. Exactly. Yeah. Because it's on the same spectrum. Right. But we have to be taught through Mm -hmm. to get to what mm. it is that we want to do, right? Oh, wow. So I walk people through mm-hmm. how to get back to that place where they, whatever it is that they did well mm-hmm. as a kid, whatever it is that they wanted to be as a kid. And a lot of times we have done things similar, mm-hmm. but just hadn't pursued that particular thing that right. we're gifted with. Right. So we walk through that. We So that's the deconstruction part of the program. Right. And then we have a Mm self-discovery where we do a series of tests and Mm -hmm. we just learn about our values, our core values. We learn about our habits and tendencies. We learn to establish boundaries. We learn all these things. And then we go to the reconstruction phase where we put our lives together and create the plan or create a blueprint for ourselves to work from. Okay. I'm going to stop you right there Mm because I I don't want to go too far into the coaching. I want to start with the, the first business was the mommy uh, lunch connection. Mommy's lunch connection. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, start there. Like you, you started doing the mommy lunch connection because and you couldn't go back into the salon. I right? couldn't go back into the salon. I was trying to figure out what I can do. Mm-hmm. I, um, I was stuck. Right. in California for five months because okay. I couldn't travel, okay. couldn't fly back to Dallas to either get my things to go back or, you know, come back. This and was at the top of the th- pandemic. This is this is during the pandemic. Okay. This is in Ju- in between January and May of 2021. Oh, second year. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. And so at that time, I was trying to figure out what I could do to make some money. Mm-hmm. I told my guy that I didn't want to work anymore. Your guy, my 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 life's partner. Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> you gotta clarify. I'm like, yeah, your yeah. guy, my guy, your yeah. pimp. Yo, what, what are you talking right, about? Right, you know. And and it's we're too old to have a boyfriend, <laughs> so I'm always hesitant to call him my boyfriend. I'm not comfortable calling him my man, so I just would always say my guy. You know, I love and it. then identify and clarify <laughs> that he's my life's partner. Right. We went through this before when she was, you know, she started talking about her her boyfriend basically and. Yeah. Yeah. She said, my guy, I'm like, who the heck are you talking about? And I think I let you finish talking a little bit before. But I still had him back in my mind. Like, like who is her guy? guy? Yeah. But her boyfriend, just so you guys know. <laughs> yeah. Her boo. Yeah. Yes, yeah, my boo. Uh-huh. And uh, I told him I didn't want to work. I wanted to contribute, but right. I didn't want to work. Right. Like I had been. Right. And so he was like, got you. And when you say contribute, what do you mean? Meaning, um, I've always had the mind, and I haven't been able to live this yet, Mm -hmm. but I'm going to. Okay. Um, I've always had the mind that I would learn to live on 
my man's salary. Uh huh. And then my money would be used to do the extra things that we want. If we want to travel, if we want to buy property, if we want to start a business, right. whatever we want to do, mm-hmm. we would use my money to do that. Right. But we would live mm-hmm. on his money. So we were really basically learning to live on one income mm-hmm. so that we wouldn't be both house poor mm-hmm. or, you know, financially strapped mm-hmm. because we had an extra income, you know, a, a source of, of extra income. So right. I wanted to live that. Right. <laughs> So, you know what? I'm going to have to stop you right there because I think I know a lot of people are saying, what? Wait a minute. We in 2022, you know, woman's going to live off a man, you know, and, 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 you know, try to pursue her dream. What would you what would you say to that? Well, first of all, you don't understand clearly because when you're in an interdependent relationship, Mm -hmm. it's whoever's the best person for doing that particular thing. Right. Is the person that should be doing it. So if I'm if I'm better at, say, making money right because i can always make money I've, mm-hmm. I've been making my own money since i was 15 absolutely i've never had to worry about money money always comes to me okay right right so if i'm able to do that then mm-hmm. that means my income potential is unlimited right whereas my 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 guy mm-hmm. he had a set because he he was a blue collar worker right so he had a set set of income mm-hmm. but we would live mm-hmm like we didn't have that limitation. Exactly. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So if I learned to live, like have our housing expenses off of that income mm-hmm. and then we could save and do other things mm-hmm. and live right. off of my income. Exactly. We're working in this together. Exactly. You know? Exactly. Yeah. So it, it it's going to work for me. And I say it's going to work for me because it is in my future. Hello. Had to Speak have, it. I don't want to be dependent exactly. on anyone. Okay. I, my parents shop taught me that. <laughs> <laughs> Good parents. Good parents. Didn't want to be dependent. Uh-huh. Um, didn't I created some codependent relationships, and I don't want to live that exactly. because it's not healthy for them or for me. Right. Um, independence. It's overrated. Yeah. You know, but you have to go through that phase in order to learn how to stand on your own. Yeah. But when you're in an interdependent relationship, Mm -hmm. I can do what it is that I need to do on my own. Right. But I want to do it with you together. Exactly. And I I like the way you said that, you know, independence is overrated because a lot of people don't realize, first of all, how hard it is to... To be on your own and do your own thing. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it is a little overrated. I wish I did have someone to back me up. So I do agree with Mm -hmm. you on that. Yeah. Yep. And during that time that I had gotten sick, I had to stay with my sister and and her husband and my mom. And I had to let them take care of me. How was that for you? I mean, it was very difficult. It was very humbling because I I was always the go to person. Yeah. So for me to now be taken care of and and be willing to participate in the process because I could have been resistant. Yeah. I could have tried to assert my own independence and that I got this. Right. But that was my time for me to rest. Yeah. It was time for me to rest my body. Yeah. It was time for me to rest and heal my mind, my emotions. I was able to work through a lot of things. So I took advantage of the opportunity that I had been extended as opposed to, oh, no, I'm fine. I got this. Right. All that other BS that I used to say. Right. The you know? one thing that I've learned mm-hmm. in my journey is mm-hmm. that if you really want to show people you love them, you got to let them help you. You do, because it has to be reciprocal. Right. I can't always give to you and don't allow allow you to give to me right. because now I cut off your blessing. Exactly. So I always, I always tell people, you know, if someone's giving you something, mm-hmm. even if you're not going to use it or you mm-hmm. don't need it, just take it yeah. because you just don't know what that does for someone. You yeah. know, even if you're feeling yeah. bad, you know, go help someone. Cause I'm telling you, once you start helping people, yeah, that, that definitely brings That's you a, out a of good it. Good boost. Yeah, it, exactly. So yeah. go ahead and continue. Yeah. So I, I took advantage of that opportunity mm-hmm. to rest Good. And it was during that time that I began to heal. For the first time in my life, I let go. Wow. I wasn't trying to control anything. I wasn't trying to control. I couldn't even control myself at the time. Okay. So that was a big I'm, I'm, thing for I'm me. I'm putting myself in your place because I've actually been there. So I'm, yeah. I'm like just reminiscing. So yeah, yeah. It, it's hard when you're so strong and independent all the time. And mm-hmm. then you're like, okay, what is happening to my yeah. body? Yeah, because... When I hit that breaking point, I started thinking a couple of months before, Mm -hmm. if something were to happen to me, who's going to take care of me? Because I was taking care of everybody and everything. Who's going to take care of me? 
and it worked out yeah. that, you know, my sister and my mom were able to speak into me. My brother-in-law, oh my gosh, he took me to my doctor's appointments. He would sit in the rooms with me mm-hmm. where I would forget certain things or or he would take notes of what the doctor said. He would interject questions, you know, about my health and my, my well-being and what it is that my next steps needed to be. I needed that. Right. I needed someone to speak on my behalf. Mm-hmm. And he was there to do that. And I'm so grateful. Mm-hmm. So so grateful but there was a time where I thought that I could just do it myself you know right. and and even when I told my guy I need you to take care of me mm-hmm. I had never asked that of him before what was his, his reaction he said I got you oh that's what that's what we all want he heard me and he said I got you Those three magical words yeah yeah and and he made every effort that he could to do that I love that Okay. Yeah. So um, you were um, you were pretty much uh, down and out basically for what three months? You said five. Five months. Five months. I came back to Dallas in May. Did your family come with you? No. Okay. I, I took a train. You took a train. I took a train. How cool is that? That was so cool. <laughs> oh my gosh! I I've been to forty three states right. in the country, uh-huh. and I've been to like fifteen countries. Uh-huh. Right. Love to travel. Right. I had never seen the this part of the country right. by train. I had never been on a train. Oh. And so I couldn't fly right. because there was pressure in my head and they didn't know if, you know, going into that high elevation, oh. it would cause a problem. Right. So I was like, well, I want to go back. So I'll take the train. Right, right. So I took the train. It was like two, Oh yeah. my gosh. It is the best. I bet. It yeah. is the best. There are other places that I want to go now on the train <sighs> because one, we're, because we were in the height of the pandemic, right. You had to have your own area. Right. So I didn't have anybody sitting around me. Nice and private. Nice and private. I had, I was able to open the curtains. I was able to see the sunrise. <sighs> And I was able to watch the sunset. Just letting the country I, go by. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. And it was beautiful. Mm-hmm. We went through the painted desert. We saw oh. all these cactus and mountains and just everything, wow. you know. And it was just really good because at that time I was able just to think. Nice. Yeah. So you're coming back to Dallas. So I'm coming back to Dallas. You settle in. Mm-hmm. And when did the mommy, uh, the mommy's lunch connection start? It started in June. I was talking to a friend of mine and well, two separate friends. Mm -hmm. One friend, I had a major meltdown and I had to surrender everything. I had to surrender myself, my thoughts, my ideals, all the dreams that I had, all the accomplishments that I had made, all the failures and blunders that I had made. Because you couldn't do some of the things. I had to surrender all of that. Oh, wow. I had to let it go. I couldn't put stock in anything that I trusted in. Mm. And I just, I'm, I'm telling you, I was snotting and crying. I was sitting in my car and I'm snotting and crying. And my friend, she just allowed me to be able to just go through that. Mm-hmm. Right. But she was there with me. Right. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And that's a really good friend to allow, to not try to interject what they think or, mm. or, um, you know, it's going to be okay. Right. You know, she just let it not be okay, but she was on the line with me. That's awesome. You know? What's, the, I, what's the friend's name? Her name was Cheryl McGee. Hi, Cheryl. English. Thanks for being I'm there for so Karen. I'm so grateful. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> she was amazing. So I went through that. Mm-hmm. The next day, mm-hmm. Saturday, I'm talking to another friend, mm-hmm. Carrie Parker. And Carrie, um, I was trying to figure out what I was going to do mm-hmm. because I needed to make some money, right. but I didn't know what to do. Exactly. And she said, well, Karen, you've always wanted a restaurant and you've always cooked in every salon that you've been in. Right. So why don't you um, consider opening a restaurant? But I didn't want that overhead, so especially it, in this climate. Right. You know? So you were doing hair, but still bringing food to. Yeah. Every salon that I would, because I had a family of five mm-hmm. when my kids were growing. Right. Well, now it's just me. Okay. But I don't know how to cook for a little bit of people. <laughs> So everything that I would cook, I would just do any salon I was working in. I just always took food. Right. And when we would have like different events, you know, I would do the cooking. Okay. So it was. Yeah. Yeah. Natural. Natural. Yeah. Yeah. So. So then I said, well, I, you know, and years ago when I had my daughter, she just turned 30 on Thursday, wow. March 10th. Oh my God. And I shot her senior portrait. Yes, you did. Yes, yes you did. Yes. She just turned 30. Can you believe it? I can't believe it. And um, believe when she was born, I didn't want to leave the salon. I didn't want to go back into the salon. Mm-hmm. I wanted to be a mommy. 
And so I started cooking. Mm -hmm. I worked in a salon that had like 21 stylists and barbers. Oh, So I started cooking and selling meals Mm -hmm. at that salon. And then there was a a doctor's office next door. Mm -hmm. And then there was a um, auto garage behind. Okay. So I started serving those people on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Thursday, I would do like any meat, chicken, Mm -hmm. fish. I mean, no, excuse me, chicken, beef, pork, just whatever. Right. On Friday, Mm -hmm. I always did something with fish or seafood. Seafood. Yeah. And then on Saturday, I always did a sack lunch. What's a sack lunch? Like a, a sandwich? A sack lunch would be a sandwich, chips, fresh fruit, veggies, oh. and a cookie, a fresh baked cookie. Right. Right? Right. And I was telling her Love about it. this. She mm-hmm. said, well, why don't you start doing that again? You know, I think I could do that. She said, why don't you just like go around to salons that you know mm-hmm. and barbershops that you know people right. and start there. Exactly. So that next week mm-hmm. on the 3rd of January, oh, July, mm-hmm. I made a rotini pasta salad mm. and I made some flyers and I went to some salons. Now, this is the day before 4th of July. So a lot of places were closed and just everything. But everybody that I hit, I was able to give them a sample. I made like a four ounce sample. And I gave them a sample and I gave them a menu. And so I said I was going to start selling Uh on the 8th, which was that coming Thursday. Right. And it took off like crazy. See, this is this is the norm in New Orleans. Like we used to sell plurines on a corner and you can always make money. Now it's probably you have to have permits. Mm -hmm. So I love this. I love this. You know, this is definitely going back to my roots where, you know, we made plate lunches at church or, you know, someone had a supper, Mm -hmm. you know, and it just before social media, it got out like by word of mouth. Yes. And my business took off by word of mouth because even though I have social media, uh I have all these pictures of food that I made, but I've never posted it because (laughs) I don't have time. (laughs) You know, that's a whole nother story. But, but my, but, my business took off just word of mouth and right. I started serving like maybe 10 salons and I, st- and I just have gone back to uh-huh. focusing on those 10 salons until I can grow because I started reaching out and then it got diluted. Mm-hmm. So now I'm like, you know what, let me get back to what started me. Exactly. Oh, yeah. All right. So let's go ahead and fast forward. So now you realize, okay, I'm going to go back to my roots. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go ahead and start with this mommy lunch connection. Yes. Um, how has it been? How how long? How old is Mommy's Lunch Connection? Mommy's Lunch Connection started July eighth, twenty twenty one. So we are wow. like what eight months in, wow. seven or eight months in. Okay. And um, I serve primarily salons and barbershops okay. because that's where my heart is. That's where my love is. Exactly. And I know the pain points of stylists and barbers because right. we oftentimes would neglect ourselves. Exactly. Um, which is part of how I got sick. Oh. I would not eat consistently oh trust me i know as a a recipient of getting my hair done i've heard many stylists stomach growl (laughs) yeah you know and 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 we're like okay i'll i'll eat after i finish this person right the next person comes in and now you put that off and then you don't want to go to the bathroom yeah because you got to step away now how dumb is that you're not why would you neglect but that's that is typically the the reality yeah of a hairstylist or a barber because you guys work 12 hours sometimes 12 to 14 hours a day. I took a job at Sharper Image because whenever I would want to learn something, I would take a job. So I was working at Sharper Image because I wanted to understand like one inventory Mm because I was doing retail and and all that. I wanted to understand how that worked. Mm -hmm. And then there were some other things that I wanted to learn from there. And I I just like the products and, you know, stuff like that. Exactly. So I started at Sharper Image. This one guy came over to me. He said, you know what? We're going to need you to take a break because you're making all of us look bad. Oh. Because I'm used you to working used all the way to through. It. Yeah, your your body was used to being in motion all the time. Yeah. Oh, wow. Who knew yeah, that I know, that would right? be an issue? But it was. Wow. But that is that is what we do. Yeah. And so now I'm able to, when I go into salons and barbershops, mm-hmm. I know how it is when you're working with a customer, how you don't want to be interrupted. Right. So I try to go in as stealthily as I can. Right. I'll put their food in the refrigerator or just whatever or right. wherever they ask me to. I don't offer anything to their customers unless they invite their customers because my focus is on the stylist exactly. and the barber. Oh, I love that. I love yeah. that. But I'm yeah. pretty sure you still get the customers as I, well. I still do. Yeah. You know, but it's all about have respect. Enough to, but it's about respect. Exactly. And, and whenever I go into a business and anybody that eats my food, right. I want them to know that they are valued. Mm. I want them to know that they are appreciated yes. because they could choose anybody's food. 
food. Exactly. I want them to know that I respect them and their businesses mm. how by how I approach them and how I deal with them. Right. But I also want them to feel the love that I put in my food. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. I want it to I want it to be a big hug for them. I want I it to be nourishing and loving. Right. I think it's more than just your food, your wonderful dishes that you cook. I think it's all mm-hmm. about you too, the personality yeah. and the smile you bring, you know. Yeah. And I always say people just don't buy into, you know, your business. They buy into you. They buy into you. I mean, you you may not even be the best at what you do. Mm -hmm. I mean, with anything, but if you are, you have this amazing personality, people Mm -hmm. will buy into you. And that's what's more important to me. I had two instances where I, I disappointed, like there was one, one lady at a salon. She wasn't satisfied with her sack lunch because I didn't put cheese on it. I didn't, you know, and I didn't have any condiments in the bag. Right. 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 And she, she said, you know, cause I asked, you know, I went in and I was like, well, how was your lunch? Blah, blah, blah. She said, well, First of all, the sandwich was dry. Ooh, and no, she I mean, didn't. she ripped me a new one, right? Like she said it in front of people or what? Oh, yeah. Oh, damn. What? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. We're talking about black people. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she did. But it was how I responded to her. Okay. I apologized to her for not meeting her expectation because it was, the, and she was like one of the first people that I had served this sex lunch to. Mm, yeah. Right? Wow. And then I was able to go back and I, I, I made her another lunch mm-hmm. the next week. Right. And I took it to her at right. no charge. Mm-hmm. And For I, customer service. I, and I yeah. yeah, because customer service is always what's been important to Absolutely, me. Absolutely. Yeah. How you serve people is, mm. is a reflection of who you are. Oh, yeah. So I and I thanked her for telling me that because. A lot of times and, and this is a note for people that don't like to tell people about their business. Mm-hmm you are doing a person a disservice because they can only fix what they know about. Mm. But you can tell other people about what they did wrong or what you don't like about their business or what you don't like about their service. Mm -hmm. But if you haven't told them, Mm -hmm. you've done them a disservice. So I appreciated that she was candid with me about what she didn't like. What was your response? And I I thanked her for telling me and Uh I apologized to Mm -hmm. her for, you know, because I, I, I missed it. Mm. But it was my first time serving too. Wow. So I allowed myself that fail. See, this is the thing that scares most people when they try to become an entrepreneur. They're afraid Baby, of the mistakes. They're afraid of When the, you want to be an entrepreneur, yeah. you better be ready to fail fast because that's the quickest way to learn. Mm. You, when you come up with an idea, it's like a learning curve that right. I operate from. So you come up with the idea. Right. You try it. Mm-hmm. You fail. Exactly. You reevaluate and you see what didn't work. Then you reset and you try again. Mm. You fail a little less. Mm-hmm. You reevaluate what worked and what didn't. Right. You reset. And that's how you get through that cycle of mastery. Exactly. Because soon you become an expert. Soon exactly. you become a master at what you do. Wow. So you if you wanna if you wanna learn and grow and mm-hmm. you wanna be an entrepreneur, mm-hmm. you better be ready to fail right. fast. Oh my God. You know what? <laughs> failing is the best part because failing is. is where most of the lessons come from. Yes. You know, anybody who's born into, you know, wealth with so many advantages and privilege and everything. They they don't they see, miss it. They miss it. They miss it. They miss it. They don't get that. They don't get that lesson. Yeah. So I, I feel to believe that failure is necessary. You need it's that absolutely balance. Absolutely necessary. Wow. So what is okay? So what's your your best dish from Mommy's Lunch Connection? My best dish. Um, well, mm-hmm. now uh, I do I do like smothered chicken or mm-hmm. chicken and dumplings Ooh. that people request and love. Right. Um, I do like this week I did for my daughter's birthday in honor of her. I did um, hot wings, Ooh. macaroni and cheese, Ooh. candy yams, greens and hot water cornbread. And I sold that before. And that was a, a hit. Um, oh, man. <laughs> And, and my well, menu this is, changes this is good. every week because I, I get bored with food right. and, and I want to be able to introduce people with different foods. Uh-huh. So my menu changes, but once, and, and I've always been this way, uh-huh. once I'm, I'm, I'm in the moment. Right. So when I'm cooking it, mm-hmm. I'm in that moment. Exactly. The next week, I may forget what I served. <laughs> it's crazy. I need to like, tell me this, uh, as an entrepreneur or a new entrepreneur to the food space, mm-hmm. are you, and be honest, because yeah. I mean, we're, none oh, of us absolutely. are perfect. I, I'm transparent, so I'll be, tell you. Yeah, so are you, do you feel like you're very organized? Or are you just, you're working Girl. in a moment? <laughs> you're like, is that a joke? <laughs> because sometimes I feel like as entrepreneurs, I mean, we're, we're all over the place, especially mm-hmm. when we don't have a large budget yeah. and we're very, we're more creative, like 80% creative than, you know, yeah. um, you know, the 20% being very productive. <laughs> What's, what's your position right now? Because I know for myself, 
I am a creative. I, I told yeah. you coming in here, I said, in a perfect world, I would mm -hmm. only want to just sit down and just talk to people. But yeah. I got to learn lighting. I got to learn how to set this up, you know, yeah. which limits me to learn more about my guests. But at least I do. But I mean, we're just having a conversation and this is what I love. So where, where do you find yourself? Do you well, find yourself uh, knowing... Um, every aspect of your business or you feel like you lack some some parts girl i know what i lack yeah for real for real <laughs> i know what i lack and and as i experience i learn more about what i lack right but what i do right um i love to cook and it's very relaxing for me wow. and i was trying to cook like during the day mm -hmm. and and get it done but right. i end up cooking at night Really? And I cook through the night. Oh, yeah. And I'm able to like think mm -hmm. and it's quiet and right. I open my back door. So mm. the breeze comes in mm. and I listen to the night sounds like the cicadas and different things like that. Mm -hmm. And it's soothing mm -hmm. for me. Right. I, and so as I get lost in my food right. or in my cooking, mm -hmm. I'm able to infuse right. that energy right. into my food. Right? I, I heard this story one time where someone said, um, they gave him a recipe and it was like, ma'am, um, you tried the recipe. And she was like, yeah, you gave me the right recipe. Right. So mm -hmm. the chef said, ma'am, but did you put yourself into the recipe? Yeah. And I thought about that because yeah. many times, like when I'm cooking, I'm like, this don't taste like it should. <laughs> right. You know, right. But you have to actually put your passion. That's almost mm -hmm. like, you know, with me editing pictures, I have to. Yes. Put you myself into amazing. it. Amazing. You've done several projects for me thank you you did yeah. a um a video of my daughter for her graduation oh i forgot all about that and you did one for my grandmother at her cell home growing celebration and i was able to give that to my cousins and share it with her because i did a video collage with music but what you infused into that i gave you the pictures but you infused love into that wow. and it spoke to me Wow. It spoke to me. See, that's the, the reason why I do what I do is for mm -hmm. this moment right here. Yeah. What you just said. Yeah. Means more than any amount of money that yeah. anyone can pay me. Yeah. And I'm so glad you're in this space right now because yeah. I, I feel like I, I feel like I was where you were as a stylist, mm -hmm. just working and working, not knowing mm -hmm. what a Saturday felt like, not knowing yeah. what living felt like. Mm -hmm. And I feel like right now is my time yeah. to just be creative get my get my my creations out in the world you yes. know and so i'm yeah. so proud of you karen thank you I'm so proud to have you, you know as what my I've friend. Been, you know what I, i'm i'm so proud and grateful to have you as my friend i really am i really am i value thank you what you offer in my life thank you karen yeah same here and i've been saying this for the past eight months that i'm exactly where i'm supposed to be at this moment in time and I've been saying that every day to myself when I'm anxious and I feel like I'm late somewhere. I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be at this moment in time when I didn't pack the right number of meals or I forgot napkins or I forgot this. I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be at this moment in time. And do you know when I walk into a salon, somebody will say, oh, you're right on time. Mm. I just finished my client, so I'll be able to sit down and eat. Your confirmation. Because I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be at that moment in time. It keeps me from going too far into the pre, uh, to the future mm -hmm. because sometimes I used to be, I, my mother used to call me, I was, I was a dreamer. And she said I lived in a fantasy world because I was always ahead. Daydreaming probably. Always daydreaming. Me always too. daydreaming. Yeah. But I would also get stuck in my past mm -hmm. and I would rehearse a lot of trauma or a, rehearse a lot of failure, a lot of pain. And it kept me from going back because I needed to be present. Right. It kept me present. I feel like when we're, and I heard someone say this once and I tried it. Mm -hmm. If you stay present, mm -hmm. that's the best place you can be. That's the only place you can be. When you're in the past, are you thinking about the future? Those are things that, you know, you can't fix and you can't do nothing about, you know, so stay be present. present. And that is what I've been doing for the past eight months. And it has been so fruitful for me. Wow. And I see it. I definitely it is see so it. fruitful. It has caused me to relax where if I do make a blunder. Yeah. Yeah. So what? So what? It was meant to be. It was meant like, like just this week mm -hmm. I had a customer <laughs> and her name was the same as someone else's. Right. 
I didn't know which salon she was in. And I text her to tell her that I was on my way. Okay. I thought she was in North Dallas. Mm-hmm. She was in Duncanville. Oh. I had I was in I was in Oak Cliff mm-hmm. when I text her. Okay. Which is oh. like just a city away. Right. But I'm trying to get to far North Dallas. Right. And she's right down the street. And she's right down the street because she had the same name as somebody else. Mm-hmm. Her last name was different, but I didn't know what her last name was. Right. I just knew her first name. Exactly. And then she put in a request to have her money refunded because she had paid me on Cash App. And I'm like, okay. So when I got to that salon, I refunded the money. But I got to that salon and I went into the room of the lady because she's in a salon suite. I went into the room of the lady that I thought it was. Mm-hmm. And I said, I just wanted to apologize for not making it here on time. She said, I didn't place an order. I said, well, what's your name? And she told me. I said, what's your last name? And she told me. And I realized that it was the other lady in in North Dallas. Oh, Oh my God. I could have kicked myself. So when I got to the car, I called her and I apologized profusely. And I know it just sounded like a bunch of, (laughs) you know, but I I was honest. I told her, I I just I have no excuses to offer you. I just have I've just made a mistake. But what it made me do, because I send out my messages Mm -hmm. uh, to through this text company. Okay. Slick text. Okay. And I, and I love slick text. No endorsement here. It, no endorsement <laughs> here. But. Unless you want to. Unless, yeah. You know, any, anything that I throw out, I'm, I'm endorsing, you know, and I stand behind my endorsements. Um, Send her a but, check. But, yes, please, please. Or at least give me a, a month's credit. I'd appreciate it. Um, but. I called the company because other, at another time I would have just beaten myself up about that. But I thought this is an opportunity for a change. So I called the company and I said, I have an opportunity for you to expand your platform because I need something that I think you can fix. And so I told her what happened. Right. And then I told her, I need to be able to have a, a space where I can know what salon each person is coming from right. so that I know where to go. Mm. Right. So she said, well, you know, you can customize the platform and you can add that in. She said, well, I tell you what, I'll go ahead and I'll add it in. What information do you need? I said, I need the salon name, the salon address, because it wasn't in the regular platform. Oh, wow. okay. But I was proactive yeah. in getting that situation fixed. Well, now... I'm going to send that out to all my customers because I mail out to like 285 customers, Mm -hmm. which before I started working with them, I was sending an individual text because I didn't want to send a group text. So it took me like two hours to text all these people. So then I found this platform. The more we know, right? Yeah. But every blunder, I say that to say Mm -hmm. that was a part of my fail. Yeah. So now I was able to Mm reevaluate, fix the problem, reset. Mm. Now I can try it again by sending out a link so that they can put in their information mm-hmm. to update my records. Right. And then whenever somebody places an order, because I sent out a blast saying, you know, I had a few more dinners left. So mm-hmm. she paid for a dinner. Right. Well, now I'm not going to be able to replace that dinner. Mm-hmm. But in the coming week, I'm going to replace that meal for her. Good for Even you. though I refunded yeah. her money. Yeah. I want to honor yeah. her mm-hmm. and respect her mm-hmm. desire to have a meal that I didn't provide for her. And guess what? She's going to go and tell people that, hey, you not only went the extra mile, you Mm -hmm. went 10 miles Mm -hmm. beyond. Mm -hmm. Refunded my money, gave me Mm -hmm. my food. And, Mm -hmm. you know. And And, and that's that's the level of integrity that I desire to operate in. Love it. Because character is all you have. Your name Mm. and your word is all you have. And and this is what I do with people. When I meet people, Mm -hmm. especially, well, not especially. When I meet people, (laughs) Mm -hmm. I strip away all of their credentials. Okay. I strip away all of what I see them okay. with, whether they have it or not. And I look for who it is that's in front of me. Oh, you let them prove themselves instead Be- of their appearance. Yeah, because a lot of times people hide behind degrees. They hide behind affiliations. They hide behind all of these things. But you got somebody else because we've learned to put on a mask. We, we present ourselves of a facade of ourselves to the entire world, mm-hmm. which is what I've done for years. And but behind is falling apart and in shambles, in pain. But nobody can see it because you've got this smile. You know, you've you've got this nice car. You've got these nice clothes. You've got these nice bags. You do all these things. Right. But you're in pain. Yeah. You're miserable. You're mean. <laughs> Exactly. You know, without even knowing it. And then you're proud of it. And you're proud of it 
because that is who you present to the world. That's what your ego says that you are. Exactly. But I strip people away. And when I st- I've stripped people that have had like high credentials and seen the the ugly flaws mm. and I've accepted them for that. I've seen people that didn't have credentials that people would look at and, and think low of them because they didn't have this or they didn't this or they, they weren't that. And I've seen the greatness in them right. and yeah. wanted to bring that out in them. Wow. That for me is a gift. Yeah. Yeah. But it's something that I've had to learn in so many hard ways. What I love about this new transition in your life is that I am interviewing Miss Mommy Lunch Connection. Yes. And Miss Coach Keep Coming Out. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. I feel like I love how you're able to merge the two together. Because they're a part of me. Yeah. They are a part of me. It's not yeah. it's not a part of a facade. Yeah. It's not something that I have trained to do. Now, I did go to Alpha Empath Coaching, mm-hmm. and it's a heart-centered practice, not head-centered. Okay. I didn't understand what that meant mm-hmm. until I practiced it mm-hmm. because I was able to get to my heart and not go through all this muck and mire in my head and... and um, when I started tapping into my heart, it became authentic. It became true. I became transparent and, I, and I'm no longer afraid to be transparent because who can hurt me? Right. No one can hurt me. No. No one can do anything. No one can take advantage of me anymore. Right. No one can harm me do anymore. Do you think that this, this new attitude or this new outlook comes with maturity? Girl came through pain. Come, it came through pain. <laughs> I've had more loss in the last, I've had a lot of loss in my life. But the last 13 months has been the most excruciating, painfully loss, painful loss. So I was going through your, um, your Instagram this morning, just doing some research, mm-hmm. just trying to see what you recently worked on. Mm-hmm. Um, and I did come across this, um, this post you put up. You put up a repost from 2020. Mm-hmm. Um, it was at the height of the pandemic, and mm-hmm. they canceled your your uh, Tom Joner um, cruise. Mm-hmm. And even back then, you had a great attitude about it. But when you reposted at the top, you said something as far as "I'm trying to get sad. I'm trying to be sad." Can you explain why you explained that? Um, today is the day that we buried my brother. Because he died in January, but in California, the the corona deaths were so high that we couldn't bury him until March 13th. And it popped up in my memories. And when I saw it, now earlier, like a couple of days ago, I felt like I had been gut punched because the memory of um, me posting his wake popped up and I wasn't ready for it. I knew it was coming close to the time, but I didn't know it was going to be that day. And I just felt like it took the wind out of me. And then today I knew that this was the day, but I didn't realize that it was in my memories. And I was trying to get sad because I miss my brother and I was hurt that he died for so many reasons. But I was really angry with him because I felt like he left me. Now, it, we, when we were growing up, it was just he and I. We had other siblings because both of our parents, they remarried, but it was he and I were from the first set of parents. Okay. And I've always taken care of him. He's two years younger than me, but I've always taken care of him as a kid. Mm-hmm. So I've been a mommy my whole life, even before I became a mother. Even at two years old, being two years two older years than Two years him, older, were- I was mothering him. Wow. That, 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 um, that archetype of mother, that was me. Wow. And as we grew and he, of course, you know, grew older and 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 he became the patriarch of our family after my father passed away. But I still cared for him emotionally. Mm. And then he left me, I felt. And I was angry and I had to work through that. And so I've, in December of this year or last year, I worked through that whatever 20. 22 brought Mm -hmm. I would be ready for it because I knew we were coming up on the anniversary of his death and I was feeling away and I was weepy it's Thanksgiving was his favorite holiday so I was really really sad right 
But I couldn't allow myself to go under like that. Well, my guy passed away February 16th. And it was the same exact feeling that I had when my brother passed. But my experience with him was different because I was able to say goodbye to him. This is the same guy you just that I'm just speaking of. Yeah. And because of what he put in me, I was able to move forward with promoting this new class that I'm offering and just moving forward with my life. Because all of the things that we talked about that I wanted to do, I talked about and shared with him. Now, on, in, the, in the natural sense, I could grieve. I could lay down. I could, you know, and people would understand. Oh, she's, you know, she just had a lot of loss. But I knew that I was in the fire. And I had to strike while the irons are hot. I couldn't let it cool down. I couldn't let it cool down. And he was my mirror. He was my lesson. And he was my teacher. And his name means hammer. Mm. And wow. so when we think about that scripture, uh, I think it's Proverbs twenty-seven seventeen that says, iron sharpens iron, so a man sharpens the countenance of his friend. Mm. He was sent in my life to sharpen me. And I was sent for him. And every, with every blow, it would either get smoother mm -hmm. or it would get sharper. And then when you douse it in the water, it sets it. But I couldn't, I couldn't allow myself to be frayed and be weak right now because this is hammering time for me. Yeah. This is sharpening time. Oh, yeah. I can cut and heal at the same time now. Oh, wow. So I was trying to be sad because emotionally and physically I was feeling that way. But spiritually, when I listened to that, I was high because it lifted me. My own words lifted me because in 2020, it was seven days before my salon got shut down. And at that time, my guy was still working. He was in construction. Mm -hmm. So and we weren't together at that time. You just coordinate each other, basically? Or? No, we were separated. We, we broke up for oh. two years. And when he heard that the salons had shut down, he called me and he came by and he brought me some money and mm. then he would bring me groceries. And he just was talking to me as a friend. Right. And then he, 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 said, uh, he said, you know, the pandemic will show you who you want to be with. If you got to be quarantined with somebody, hmm. he said, and if I had to be quarantined with anybody, I would want to be quarantined with oh. you. And we reconnected. And the last two years of our life have been amazing because they've been on purpose. Right. It wasn't all Forced. that old stuff. Yeah, it wasn't, it didn't have a label. No. Basically. No, yeah. it didn't. Yeah. We were both free. We yeah. were interdependent. He was still able to do and be with who and who he was. And I was able to do and be and, and be with who I was. So going to going into your course, so. um, we have a couple more minutes, about 10 more minutes. OK, well, the time is just flying, right? <laughs> I look forward to coming back. Uh, you will be back. I hope so. <laughs> so going into your course, what is it basically talking about? Is it talking about life lessons? Is it talking about relationships, um, which pretty much work hand in hand? Mm -hmm. um, what's the basis of your courses? The basis of my course, everybody that because I have a great group that I'm working with right now and everybody has a different perspective of what it is they want to work in. Okay. So when you're reinventing yourself, you are taking what it is that you have, you're looking at it and sorting through what you need to get rid of, mm -hmm. because there's a lot of things that have attached themselves to us that we need to just get rid of. Then there are some things that we have neglected that need to be refined and, and built up, but we need to be able to look at it and sort through it. Right. So we're going through that. Mm -hmm. So there's one person that is at a place in her life where she just wants to know who she is and what it is that she wants to do. Can you talk a little bit about this person without revealing her name? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. She has um, she's discovered that in her childhood she was very creative, mm -hmm. but she's gotten away from that. OK, she's stifled. Right. 
you know, because of life and because of having to work and be and all this stuff. So she's a a, a younger woman? No, older woman? no, she's an older woman. Kids, married. She's, she's been married. She's divorced. She's mm-hmm. got older kids. Mm-hmm. And she's just trying to find her way for herself because a lot of women, we get lost in our families. We get lost in our children. We get, you know, because for a long time I had my identity in who my children were and what I put into them. I lived through them. Right. But when they were away, I, I didn't know what to do with Is myself. Is that common? For it's it's mo- very common. Okay. It's very common. I brought that up to mm-hmm. one of my senior portrait, because um, I hear it a lot, mm-hmm. you know, being a senior portrait photographer. Mm-hmm. And when I know I'm shooting their last senior, mm-hmm. if they have a bunch of, uh, a few kids, mm-hmm. then um, I'm always like, oh, you're at the end of the, the um the chapter or you're you know you about to close the chapter and sometimes they're sad and sometimes they're like no not really you know i'm mm-hmm. i'm looking forward to my next chapter yeah um but i can only imagine mm-hmm. um you know just having your like you said having your identity wrapped up in your mm-hmm. kids mm-hmm. um or even being married and being then, married wrapped up into your partner whether yeah. you're a man or a woman you know you can be wrapped up into your wife or your husband or whatever you can also get wrapped up into your career cuz i was wrapped up in my career I be 38 years at the top of my game. I based a lot of who I was and the influence that I had. I think that's how and I felt about photography too, you know? Yeah. Like it was hard to even start anything else because all I knew was me, was that? me being a photographer. And, and being on the top of your game. Wow. Yeah. And you got to lay that down. Yeah. And then what are you going to do? Who I know. are you? I know, you know right? what I mean? And that's where people find themselves. And a lot of times they either continue doing what it is that they're doing because they don't know anything else right. or they have courage like the, the, the women that are in. Because I have all women this time. I had a, I had men in my last class mm-hmm. and I'm open to men. I love, love, love men and working with them. But um, I have women in my class and all of them have made the courageous step to do something different, to look at themselves differently, to appreciate and value what it is that's in them that has always been there, that they've neglected, and then to let go of those things that they held dear that are not serving them anymore. I once heard that the reason why we get so sad, you know, sometimes is because we stop wanting things. We stop exploring. Do you think there's some truth to that? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. We get stuck when we like even in relationships, we expect a person to always be who they were when we met them. Right. I don't want you to be who you were. And I and it's been great, but I want you to evolve. I want you to grow and you should expect to grow. You should expect to change. You should we change every what? Ten years or so. Right. Girl, we change every day, (laughs) every day, especially when you're in in a healthy place. You should be changing daily. Right. But. You get stuck in thinking that thing. And, and, and this is what I always resisted about getting older. Not that I didn't want to get older. I look forward to getting older. I look forward to being that old lady with stories that young people can come around and I can share I and give it. them wisdom. I look forward to that. Right. Right. But a lot of times we get stuck because I don't want to be just sitting around drinking wine and gossiping. That's <laughs> boring to me. There's so much life. So many things to do, so many things to talk about, so many things to go, so many things I haven't experienced. Exactly. Yet, you know? And I mean everything. Yeah. Yeah. You know? But we get stuck because we think that that's what we're supposed to be. I I like the way you said is about experiences because for me, that's where I find my most joy. Yeah. You know, just doing different things it's are exhilarating are learning different things like when yes. i just learned that your level needs to be a little higher than mine's i'm like oh, okay good good yeah. I, I love learning these little things because it just i don't know it just is it makes me feel like okay this day was worth it you know even yes. sitting down talking to you after all these years because we were disconnected for at least almost nine years yeah but or, look i've changed you've changed i have you've evolved i've evolved exactly and we have something to share Exactly. That's what it's all about. Having something to share. Exactly. That's meaningful. Right. Because we haven't spent a day talking about anything in the past. No. no. Because everything is present. Everything is new. Everything Everything. is fresh. Everything is exhilarating (laughs) and exciting. You know, that's the life you want to live. That's living. (laughs) Who doesn't love you? I swear. (laughs) You're just amazing. (laughs) Thank you. And and the most important thing is that I love me. Oh. Oh. 
I love me. That can be everything, a whole nother hour. Everything <laughs> else is a bonus. Yes. Because I love me. What would you say to someone who's looking for, I don't know, like they're stuck in that one career mm-hmm. and they're looking to expand, but they're afraid because, you know, this is the profession that they've always been known for. Mm-hmm. What would you tell that person? I would tell them to take Rise of the Phoenix, mm. reinventing yourself take from a the course. inside out. Really, because I have something to share, something meaningful. And when, when I share in this course, you can use it for a lifetime. And, and you should take what you learn in this course. You should take that and share it with other people because I don't have a patent on it. Yeah. I'm, I'm not, I, I can't have a patent on it. It's life. Yeah. It's just how I put it together. Mm-hmm. But you can take this and share it with your children, share it with your partner, share it with your business. You can take this information and use it to change your life. Mm every aspect of your life that's what I'm saying. so that that's where i would start for sure okay that's where i would start because I, I have so many questions about the the rise of the phoenix program mm-hmm. how did you come up with that name about 16 years ago mm-hmm. it dropped in my spirit the name of a book okay that i haven't written yet do you want to say the title or you want to keep it to yourself? Revealing Hidden Virtue. Oh, that's that's is the title of the book. Oh. And I wrote it down and I mailed it to myself so that I could copyright it immediately. OK, that's smart. And, right and, there. and if you have an idea, mm-hmm. you write it down, mm-hmm. you mail it to yourself, you leave that envelope sealed because it's got a postmark on it. Mm-hmm. So if you have to challenge anybody or go into court about it, the court officer can open it. And that's called, I have an idea it, what it's, it's called. It's an immediate way of copywriting okay. your information. I love it. So I came up with that book and I, I knew that I wanted to do like something with um, parenting, mm-hmm. you know, because I have a child that I birthed, but I have a blended family because God gave me two beautiful children that I still have a wonderful relationship with. I love them dearly. Mm-hmm. And I was able to raise them together. I was able to put things in them that were special. Like when we would have dinner Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and my restaurant, our kitchen was Uh my restaurant and it was called Shea Mommy's. Oh, (laughs) my older daughter, Uh she was the server. So she would, uh, she would take the the order. Mm -hmm. My youngest daughter, Mm -hmm. she was the busser. So she would put the waters down and she would learn how to, you know, set the table. That would would have probably been me because I don't cook. I like to (laughs) make things look pretty. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And then my son, Mm -hmm. he was the um, he was the the maitre d' or the the, he was the one that took the money. (laughs) (laughs) So we always we always made it you know, fun, fun and special. And then we had placemats that were of the United States and then a global placemat. Uh So whatever meal, like if I was making spaghetti, Uh we found Italy and we would have a conversation about Italy and we would like, I would have them to look up in the dictionary or the encyclopedias at that time because we didn't have Google, Yeah, yeah. but they would look up something about that place. And then that became their dinner conversation. Because we got away from sitting down at the table. That's where you learn how to interact with people. That's how you learn how to use your inside voice, how to have conversation at the table. But Instead we don't do it in, in, front, front in front of the TV. Kids don't know anything. Or having it's your not phone their at fault. the table. Yeah. It's not their fault. Yeah. It's our fault. When I deal with younger people, mm-hmm. especially between the ages of, like, say, 26 and 40, mm-hmm. I apologize to them for what our generation didn't do for them. Because there's so many young women and young men that don't know how to cook. They don't know how to take care of themselves. They don't know how to do anything because we were so busy out trying to be young instead of teaching them. Right. We have a responsibility to them. We can't sit back and talk about them and what they don't know and this generation, this and you created it. Yeah. Yeah. So I often will apologize Mm -hmm. for our generation to them and they're like well you know basically you're not my mother you didn't you didn't do what she did I said but I'm in her generation I'm old enough to be your mother yeah. so I'm, a, I'm making this apology and whatever I can do to help you so do you I'm willing is your co- coaching um class is online right is it's, it's uh, online it's on mm-hmm. zoom right mm-hmm. it's it's I, I I actually I prefer google meets oh google meets. but it's but it's online okay yes. do you have a certain age restriction um and if you don't 
do you have trouble pretty much trying to, I mean, do you have an age restriction? I just, I actually hadn't thought about it. Okay. So I just allow whoever is wanting it. Right. Whoever reaches out to me to come, but, and, and who's been reaching out there in their thirties, forties and fifties okay. lately, So you know, but I'm open right. and, and I want to actually this summer, I don't know how it's going to come about, but I know it's going to, I want to have a program for uh, young people uh-huh. um, between the ages of 12, 12 oh. or 13 oh. and 19. Okay. And I want to teach them home ec. I want to teach them how to cook. I want to teach them entrepreneurial skills because that's what I know. I've oh, been wow. an entrepreneur my entire life. Okay. They might have something that they can learn to sell. You know, but right. I want to be able to teach them that. I have a friend that um, she's great with finances. She mm-hmm. helped me with mine. And I want her to teach a portion of banking and, and how to, you know, how to make sure that you keep your payment history and your credit and right. just all of that. I want her to be able to teach all that. the things that the parents now are not teaching because we've gotten away from that. We've gotten away from it. Yeah. I remember you know? my grandmother taught me how to uh, write a check. Exactly. But we, don't, but we don't write check. We can't even, the kids don't even know how to do cursive anymore because we don't sign anything. Exactly. We do everything digitally. Exactly. And it's not their fault. It's, it's just not the way their fault. that things are changing. But I mean, some but traditional there's, but values. But there's still value in yeah. the, knowing those things. So yeah. I want to be able to share those things with them. And um, I'm just open. I'm putting it out there. I don't know. I'm serious. I don't know how, it's, I don't even know where it's going to be. But I know that this summer, I'm going to have a six week program mm-hmm. for young people because between 13 and 19 is the age that you get lost. Yeah. There's at 12, That's there's the still weird stuff transition. to do, yeah. but there's nothing to do and nothing but get, get in trouble, right? get high, yeah. get pregnant, mm. steal, do all those things that I didn't get pregnant, but I used to get high. I used to steal. I used to get into trouble. I used to just, because there was nothing to do. Yeah. There was nothing to do. Yeah. Had you known or had they been but programs I, out there? Yeah. yeah. So, if 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 it's not there, then and because I'm thinking about it, I'm looking at it. Mm-hmm. It's my job. Right. Anytime that you see something mm-hmm. that needs to be fixed or addressed, mm-hmm. it's being given to you as an assignment. Oh yeah. Now how you get it done? Is you, a, it, it's it's it it has to take on a life of its own. But you have to just accept the mm-hmm. call. Exactly. And then it will make its way. I always feel like if an idea or, you know, some vision is given to you, it's mm-hmm. going to happen. Or even with this podcast, you know, yeah. like I've seen people online, you know, over and over again. I'm like, wow, how are they doing that? You know, and, <laughs> and slowly but surely, you know, when the pandemic happened, I had enough time to figure it out. Yeah. You know, had it not been for that, I probably wouldn't be where I am right now. Yeah. So I yeah. am so grateful that so. this is happening and you're taking part in it. Yeah. And we're going to go ahead and end by telling everyone, where can he find you? Well, they can find me as far as Mommy's Lunch Connection. Okay. It's M-O-M-M-I-E-S. Okay. L U N C H C O N N E C T I O N dot com. You can also find me with that same name on Instagram and on Facebook. And then for Revealing Hidden Virtue Coaching, you can find me on Instagram at Revealing R E V E A L I N G H I D D E N V I R T U E underscore C O H C O A C H I N G. And then you can find me on Facebook. Mm-hmm. There's a, a group that I've started mm-hmm. called Revealing Hidden Virtue. Okay. And they can find me there. All right. And I'll have everything in the show notes um, yeah. below. So you can go ahead and just click on it. Um, <laughs> thank you so much, Karen, for thank being here. Thank you so much for having me. Of course, I'm this grateful. won't be the last time. And thanks for putting up with all my flubs. <laughs> Girl, it's been fun because this is new it's for me too fun. it's new for me and you know what you have inspired me oh. when you came to get me for my photo shoot that was fun and that was fun that was fun and i'm looking forward to utilizing your services because i want to create some uh some some road trips Ooh. some local road trips and, and be able to contract your services oh so God. look out for that but you inspired me because you're a serial entrepreneur you know and that in itself is amazing to watch and to 
I just I've, I've been gleaning so much from you and thank your you. energy. So I thank you. Thank you. It's, it's nerve wracking to, to be honest. <laughs> I know it. So I'm maybe but that's the fun part. Taking, I know, right? Everybody like, sees the, the out or the end result. They don't see all the junk that happens right. to get you there. Oh, my God. You know, I, I've gotten so many questions on like, how do you do this? Or why did you do this? And. And the only way I can explain it is kind of like photography. It just, it takes over you. Yeah. You know, you have one bad experience working a traditional job and you're like, okay, I don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. So I always go with my feeling. I always go yeah. with my gut. Yeah. Um, and the best guide. Yeah, exactly. The best guide. And I'm not the best at, you know, like executing a plan, you mm -hmm. know, per se. I just take each day as it comes. <laughs> and I mean, I, I'm not going to lie. Sometimes I, I look around, I'm like, how did I get all this? Mm -hmm. You know, and it's because I never stopped moving. Yeah. And you got to keep and moving. And it, it comes from your feminine energy. We all have feminine and masculine energy. The masculine yeah. is the executor. Okay. It's the one that got everything done. Exactly. But your feminine is where it's birth. Mm. Love it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well thank you so much karen thank you for being on the tam cam show guys make sure you check out karen scott online make sure you go ahead and get her course as well and make sure that you go ahead and follow each and every one of your passions and don't yes. worry if you have more than one passion yes it's your vision and that's all that matters we'll see you next time on a tam cam show guys have a good <laughs> one bye <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Go Karen. Go Karen. Go Karen. Go Karen. Man. Uh, uh.